Good evening and welcome everybody. Welcome to this beautiful blustery day um, here at the Uptuxet Trading Post Museum. Um, we're here to uh, maybe <laughs> beat the heat by getting some chills with some, uh, <laughs> some really interesting and, uh, and historical ghost stories. Um, so, um, so we're here this evening. Um, most people know the board, I, I forgot to introduce myself, I'm Mavis Robinson and I'm the newly elected president of the Bourne Historical Society. And uh, our society has taken on a, a big project. We're in the middle of um, rescuing what is thought to be the oldest house in Bourne Village, the uh, Perry Ellis Keene House at Nine Sandwich Road. And, um, and as we contemplate the future of this house, which we're hoping the future of this house might actually be somewhere on this property of Eptuxet, um, it's kind of fun and interesting to uh, reflect on the past of the house and, um, and to give us a little glimpse into the past <laughs> of the Keene House. We have this very special guest, Anne Gutterson. Anne lived in the house for eight years and she has a wonderful <laughs> um, spiritual history of some of her uh, spooky roommates that she's going to grace us with. So I present you Anne Gutterson. <laughs> Welcome. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for coming. This is great. <laughs> so I lived in the Keene House. Um, I was going through a transitional time in my life, divorce, and needed a place to live. So my two cats and I moved in, and it was just us for a while, and occasionally after that I'd have a roommate here and there. Um, but the moment I stepped into that house, I knew I was home. It just, it was just a, a big weight just went off my shoulders. I'm like, this is where I belong. Um, I started fixing up the house for a few months before I actually moved in, just cosmetic stuff, paint, redid the bathroom, redid the kitchen, um, and it was great. But during that time, activity started almost immediately. People would, I'd have friends painting the bathroom, and he'd be listening to a song, and if he didn't like the song, he said, oh, I hate that song, it would just switch to a different song mid, you know, and it was just his playlist, so it would just switch automatically. And then, um, sometimes when I was giving tours, I would start in the kitchen, which is on the left side of the house, and I would take people through, and the music would stop the minute we left that room. And then it would start again right where it left off when we came back. So if you have a handout, there's a floor plan on there, so let's take a little tour. We'll walk through the house, shall we? <laughs> so as you're looking at in the first page, the front hall is the section of the house that's right on Sandwich Road, right, you know, five feet from the road. So you'd walk in, and a lot of people don't know this, um, but the front of the house, which is currently the front, was originally the back of the house. The house was across the street at Five Corners, where the medical building is, and they moved it. And when they moved it, they didn't turn it, they just kept it the same, which is pretty interesting. And it's, it's, Nine Sandwich Road. It's right across from the back of the medical building here at Five Corners. It's right down the street. Yep. It's an old, old Cape Cod with a couple of additions on it. And so you'd walk in the front hall, and to the left, there was a door. And that went to the original living room, and that's what I used as my bedroom. To the right, it went to the dining room, and that was eventually used as a bedroom or storage. Straight ahead, there were two doors. There was a regular door, um, and you'd have to step up, and there, that led up to the stairs, which you can see on the first photo of the stairs, the old, the old non-legal <laughs> stairs. They were steep and narrow. <laughs> um, and up, up on the top floor, there were two bedrooms. There was the red room off to the right, and the green room off to the left, and there were eaves in the front and the back. Back to the first floor, if you're in that front hallway, there was the chimney room. So there was a little tiny four foot, four and a half foot door to the right of the door to the stairway. And you'd walk in and you can look up right into the chimney, um, which is this photo over here. And in that photo, you can actually see the back of the beehive oven from the original kitchen and some old windows that were in the house. But you could stand right up in there and, and look right up. It was really pretty cool. So the dining room had a fireplace. And then if you walk through either the dining room or the original living room, you'd get to what I call the red room. It was the original kitchen of the house with a cooking fireplace and the beehive um, brick oven. Off of there was another bedroom. I turned it into a closet. And then there was a closet and 
if you open the door, there was a trap door down to a root cellar, which is on page two. It's right, this bottom one is the granite stairs down to the root cellar. And there was a pantry and a bathroom as well. And then from there, you would, there was a regular door down to the alley, which was the addition put on either 1700s or 1800s. And that consisted of cabinets and a sink, like an old metal sink. And you can see it here. You've got all the cabinets on one side. And over here, you can see the metal sink along with a well pump, which is really pr pretty fun. We tried to get it to work. It never did. <laughs> and that was a 9 by 20 addition. And then from there, you'd go into the newer section of the house, which is, if you're on the street, is on the far left. That was built in 1990, 300 years after the original house was built. And the top photo on this page shows the kitchen of what it was when I first moved, um, started working on it. It had all these beams and everything. Um, the owner at the time was a prop guy for NBC Studios down in New York. And so he wanted it to look old like the rest of the house. So that's what he did. So I took all the beams out. And um, the picture over here on the far right is what it ended up looking like. I gave it a facelift, gave some fun paint, opened it right up. The bottom picture there is the red room, which was the original kitchen. And you can see the cooking fireplace. That's the door to the bath. And that's the door to the pantry right there. So, And then on the last page, you'll see um, this is the color I walked into, into the original living room slash my bedroom. And it had a fireplace in there, which I ended up using as a headboard for the bed. And then the original dining room, it was very worn and, and pretty tattered. Um, but we fixed it up, and it came out pretty good. So that's the tour of the house. So when I'm talking about stuff, you'll kind of understand what I mean. So if I refer to my bedroom, it's the original living room on the front left. If I refer to the red room, it's the original kitchen. And if I talk about the kitchen, it's the newer section of the house. So altogether, the house is 2,200 square feet, top to bottom. It's got a full finished basement under the new addition with a bathroom and a walkout as well. Um, the, let's see. So I already talked about that. So once I moved in, you know, the real fun began. After I was there for a couple months, the cats and I were sleeping. And at 10 o'clock at night, which seems to be my witching hour, I don't know why. But um, we heard something rustling in the red room. And I had a TV in there on a table. And I had this jar. And it was filled with Hershey's Kisses and Lifesavers sitting there. We went out. And there was candy spilled over the dish onto the floor, onto the table. And there was two Hershey's, um, two Lifesaver wrappers under one of the wing chairs, empty, perfectly empty. And the minute we went over there, I felt immediate spiritual energy just surrounding me. It's like, ooh, OK. And across the room, it was dark. I could see something silver on the ground. So I went over, picked it up. It was a Hershey's kiss. And it was like double the spiritual energy was right there. And everything kind of got blurry and, and foggy for a minute. Um, but it was so cool. I was like, what do you want? How can I help you? You know, I'm trying to under communicate with them and understand them. And they, it was always footsteps walking around in the house. There was always um, voices going on. There was in the root cellar, there was a guy down there. And every now and then, he would come up into my closet, which used to be a bedroom. And my two cats, there was two doors into that room. One would sit at one door, one would sit at the other. And they would growl like cra and make those mean cat noises whenever he was in there. And they would not step foot. If he wasn't in there, they'd go right in, not a problem. Um, he would do Morse code on the door. I don't know Morse code. I probably should have learned. But, <laughs> but if I didn't pay attention to him, he'd go to the other door by the front hall to my bedroom and start doing it there. I'm like, I don't understand you. Can you help? You know, um, The caretaker, he was a black man, about five foot seven. He wore very heavy boots, work boots. And he'd walk all around the property, inside and outside. And people have seen him. But he would really be known for walking up to the second floor of the house. And there was, of course, a ghost cat. And he would follow him. The ghost cat was a black and white 
cat with, he was short hair with a big <laughs> fluffy tail. I've seen him a couple times. But he would split into a black one and a white one. So the white <laughs> one would travel, and he has been seen at my daughter's house and my ex-husband's house over there. And he's usually like a sign of warning or telling them that something's wrong and um, you need to go look in this area for something. And they would usually find something amiss. Um, the black one would stay home. You, you could just see a little black shadow playing with the leaves of the plants and stuff like that. Or every now and then he'd curl up behind my neck and just start purring. And you're just like a little black shadow. And that was fun. But he was never really around when my cats were around. I don't think, I don't know if they didn't get along or not. <laughs> so the, my roommates, the spirits, varied greatly. So there was the caretaker, there was the cat. Upstairs, if you go up to the second floor, up on the right in the red room, that was the psychic center of the house. There was so much energy up there the minute you walk in. Um, but it was different for everybody. If a woman walked in, she felt very welcomed and at home and stuff. If a man walked in, there was a very variety of things. He either didn't feel anything, or he felt like a little kid who, at his grandmother's house who just wanted to get on the floor and play with his toys. You know, so it was, it was very different. And then um, sometimes some, some of them would just end up feeling welcome when they knew when she found out they weren't going to be of harm. You know, my son um, stayed with me for a while, and he was living up in that room. And after about a month, he woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and his cell phone was flash, turning on, turning off, turning on, turn, like immediately. And you know, cell phones don't do that. They don't go on and off that fast. And he felt like he had been drowned in a bucket of water, just like a bucket of water had been thrown on him. He was so wet. And the bureau was just the handles were shaking, not the actual bureau itself. And he got out of there. <laughs> it took him a couple of years before he would go back. <laughs> Um, the other room up on the second floor, the green room, is where the fisherman lives. And you walk in that room and it's, you just get a vibe that you don't belong in this room. He didn't like people. He didn't want people in that room. He would follow people home, as somebody in the audience fully knows. <laughs> um, and he would stay there for about a week and end up pacing back and forth in their houses until they kicked him out. And then it would take him about two weeks to get back to the house. Um, <laughs> my son one time, who was stationed in England, came as a surprise visit. And he showed up on my front door. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hey. And I was giving him the tour of the house. Well, we went upstairs, and we went into the green room. And the green room had, it had a bed, and it had a rug, a bureau, a table, and a lamp, and like a couple other odds and ends. We went up, the bed had been moved to a different wall. The table and the lamp were missing, and the rug had never changed. So I'm like, oh, it wasn't like this yesterday. <laughs> um, and then you know, three weeks went by, and he was going back home. And so I'm like, the night before he left, I heard noises again. So I'm like, we're going up. So we went upstairs. The bed was back pretty much where it was. It wasn't fully right. But the table and the lamp were back, and the rug had been moved. It was all bunched up, like somebody just dragged. The, so I found that very interesting. Um, spirits would pop in now and then that didn't live there. Um, my parents, they'd been deceased for 16 years. Um, every now and then they would pop in. My dad he wore bay rum cologne. So he would always go right in the doorway of my bedroom. I think he was protecting me from the other spirits. Um, and so he would just man, man both doors to my room <laughs> just for a day, and then he was gone. My mom would pop in every now and then, and she'd bring my other deceased relatives and be like, hey, you know, she'd knock three times and then show up, just like a brief hi, and then disappear. Um, I had a hitchhiking ghost one time show up. I went to bed, again, 10 o'clock at night, and I laid down. And he was right in my bed, facing me. I was like, hi. <laughs> and this white spirit came through the fireplace, because I had a, you know, it was blocked off, but she came through and was trying to pull him out. And he, he told me, help me. He goes, don't let her take me. And I'm like, I don't know what I can do to help you. 
You know, and she came back three times, and then finally he was gone. I had told my daughter about this guy, and she described him to a T because she had seen him walking down Barlow's Landing Road two hours before. So, no idea who he was? Uh, that even gives me chills to this day. <laughs> um, so the grandmother, uh, the caretaker, the ghost cat. All right, so the old lady. That's what I call her because I don't have another name for her. She was on the main floor of the house. She's probably the strongest spirit in the house other than the fisherman. Um, she came from a time when, you know, you ground your own flour. and th She was a very strong-willed woman. And every now and then, the the red room, the original kitchen, would smell like fresh baked cookies or brownies or fresh flowers, like usually lilies. Um, and it was wonderful, but it was just contained in that one room. It didn't go outside of that room at all. Even in the abutting rooms, it, you'd walk out and it's, it wasn't there anymore. Um, and my cat, when I moved in, I had this big, huge dresser and I put it between the two front windows of the house. And the cat would sit on the bureau and, you know, kind of careen himself out to look out the front window, all the traffic going by and stuff. I came home one day. The bureau had been moved over a good six to eight inches in front of the window so the cat could have a better view. <laughs> and he wouldn't have to careen himself over. But you could tell it wasn't dragged. It was lifted because it was on carpet. And you, could, you know, you know the marks. So, but um, the spirits used to play jokes and they would move things. Like my dish soap, gone for two weeks I couldn't find it. It was under, it was in the kitchen, which is the new section of the house. I finally found it two weeks later under the sink, way in the back in the alley. I'm like, how did you get there? <laughs> they would move keys. They would um, move books or put things out that you think you need. Um, every now and then you'd find a note or something like that that had been previously written, but they would put it there so you would know that you know they're there. If I had financial issues, I would find quarters and dimes and nickels everywhere. One time I was in one room, and I just saw a shimmer in the doorway. And I walked out, and there were three dimes lined up right in the, right, yeah, it was really cool. But I was walking in my closet one time. I walked one way to get something. I turned around. There's four quarters on the ground. I'm like, all right, that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, in the new section, so don't think the spirits are just limited to the old, old house. The new section, there was a spirit downstairs in the basement. And every now and then, he'd peek out. And you could look at him down the stairs, and he'd, you'd see his face. Um, but he would like rustle furniture around down there and move, make it sound like boxes were moving and things like that when nobody was down there. And nothing moved. Nothing was, nothing was touched, but the sounds were all there. Um, he was a smoker. You'd smell cigar smoke every now and then, but just in the basement, you know, or in the bottom of the stairway to go down. So that I always, I'm like, oh, I kind of like the smell of cigars, so it was all right. <laughs> um, there were two foreign guys that would speak some kind of a language. I don't know what it was. It was European. And uh, they would be by the trap door down to the root cellar. They would be in that area. And every now and then you'd hear them, usually like once a month. And I'm not the only one who'd heard them. Lots of my friends and family have heard them as well. But the spirits were fickle because people would come over that maybe never had an encounter with a spirit before. And so I'm like, go upstairs, stay up there. And so they'd go upstairs for probably an hour or sit at the top of the stairs or go in one of the rooms, nothing. But somebody else would go up there and they'd come down five minutes later, I'm leaving this house. you know. <laughs> so I think it all depends on the person. Um, and what you want to do. So we've had um, seances there up in the red room before. And we had my Ouija board. I have tarot cards. And we had you know, the candles going. There were four of us. There was my son, his friend, and his girlfriend, and myself. And we were sitting around. My son and I were on the bed, and his friends were sitting on the floor. And we invited a spirit from the house I used to live in that kind of followed my son around. We invited him in as the last spirit that we were chatting with. And you could see it in the doorway, just this giant shadow come through and stand right behind Chris, my son's friend. And Chris just broke out in goosebumps and a cold sweat. He's like, I'm freezing right now. And 
it, so it was very interesting. But we found out that he has been following my son because he was protecting him. Because and uh, so that was that was really nice. But once my son got married, he disappeared. Don't know where he went to. There was a time I had a gentleman caller over, and the spirits obviously did not like him because they surrounded him. We were in the kitchen, and they surrounded him, and I couldn't even feel them. And he's like, is this house haunted? I said, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course it is. He goes, how many? I said, about 12. And I said, why? He goes, because they're all standing around me right now. I'm like, well, then they're here for you because I don't even sense them, and usually I do. And uh, it took him about an hour and a half of complete freak out. And I'm like, I think you need to leave now. <laughs> and he left, and I, think, I thanked the spirits. I said, thank you for being my personal security guards. <laughs> you know, so I never really worried about anything when I was in there. I had an understanding with the spirits. If anything ever happened that I didn't like, I would, I would talk to them. You know, I never, everyone's like, why don't you sage the house? I'm like, because I don't want to get rid of them. I want them here. I want to interact with them. This is their home. It was their home before it was my home. You know, um, there's, um, there's so many stories. There's so many, that house has so much character between the spirits and the interior of the house and the way it was built. And it just, it held so many good memories for me. And I, I love going back to visit. Um, just because I feel, I still feel like I'm at home when I walk in there. So does anybody have any questions? Why are there so many spirits just in one house? Like you said, there were maybe 12. They probably have very good memories attached to the house or the, or the land, you know, and it's, it's a nice place. Yeah. It's a welcoming place, except for the fishermen. But yeah. <laughs> yeah the number of spirits is really something. How many do you figure were there? About 12. 12. I've personally seen, I've, I've met about eight of them, like personally met, um, whether it's sensed them, smelled them, um, seen them, about eight. But there's others that people who can actually see spirits have told me that, that were there. I remember, when I, I remember when I first came in, I think it was the first time I visited you, and, uh, and you hadn't really given me much information. Mm -hmm. I came in and I was like, are there 11 spirits here? <laughs> goes around there and yeah. you know, like probably yeah yeah um, but it's I just think that that house is really interesting the the spirit energy because um, sometimes that happens in places that are key places in history mm -hmm. you know that maybe there was much more that happened there you know people met they did political things early mm -hmm. organized they um, you know there were of wars all kinds of things and um, sometimes when there's multiple spirit energy there's, there's reasons that that's the location for that right yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yes, Sue. Do you know any of the history? Like, did the fisherman live there? I really, I have no idea. I, I imagine he did, um, yeah. you know, because they say it was an old captain's house. And so he might have been on the crew with the captain, or he wasn't the captain, you know what I mean? He was, but uh, just like an old fisherman, think Gorton's fisherman, um, he had followed somebody out. I was having a party one time. And he followed somebody out to the parking lot. And they're like, you're not coming home with us. Because he had followed them home before. And they're like, you're not coming back with us again. <laughs> so, so what does he look like? I mean, how, how, how do you know he was a fisherman? Oh, yellow slicker, yellow pants, yellow hat, the beard. Yeah, he was, he was definitely a fisherman. Yep. Maybe he was just out for day. It might have been. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting to see a lot of times people they wonder, you know, well, how do you see them? Like, what do they look like? You know, mm -hmm. and for me, that it's always a peripheral, or it's usually seeing them like um, not necessarily with my with my eyes, and then sometimes it's with my eyes too. But mm -hmm. they're very different experience mm -hmm. when I pick up on someone. But, um, it's almost for me, it's sort of a knowing. Like, I didn't have to try to see it. Just like, yeah. And then I go places and people will like beings that have been and that are no longer. They'll have conversations. Would you ask me to tell people certain things? Mm -hmm. And then I have to decide whether I want to tell them or not. You're right. <laughs> so, so. Yep. Yeah, I had taken some pictures um, when I was first in there, and I was upstairs on the second floor in the eaves, and I just took a photo, and out of the corner of my eye, I could just see, like, this huge orb just moving by me. And I didn't get it on camera, 
but I could just, it was just huge, huge white, yellowish white orb, just like whew, right by me. You know, I was like, oh, hi, you are here. <laughs> but I was always welcoming to them, yes. So just to, to you know, follow up on what Scott said, what was your, were you actually seeing them with your eyes or was it like the peripheral vision thing or you have such visual descriptions of them, like you knew that it was a black man who was the caretaker, like did you actually? You can think that description to Scott, um, oh, but, right. but I could sense him, I, could he I can usually hear them and I can sense them and smell and um, I don't usually see them, okay. sometimes I do. It, it all depends on if they want to make themselves known to me. So you sort of pulled together these identities by getting help from various people who are like in touch with spirits. Yes. And, okay. Yep. All right. Yep. I've had a couple mediums over there, yep. and they've they've given me some insight to these um, roommates of mine. <laughs> and you know what? I would have them back again anytime. I told them. I said, "You can't come to my new house with me, but you're more than welcome to visit." <laughs> And I think what's so beautiful about you is that you just have a way of being really open to this. And so I think that, you know, once the communication became comfortable, mm -hmm. it increased, you know, and, and you just you got to meet all the spirit because you were so open. But a lot of people just are busy and they don't realize they have an intuitive ability. Yeah. I've always been this way. Ever since I was a kid, I've lived in lived with spirits my whole life. Whatever house I'm in. Um, and apparently I didn't feel any since I moved into my condo, I haven't felt any until a few weeks ago. And I had fallen asleep before work my, at my second job. And I felt a tap, tap, tap on my shoulder. And I woke up and it was 15 minutes before I had to be at work and I worked 10 minutes away. So I was like, thank you very much. And I think it was my mom. I'm pretty sure it was my mom because she's like the three thing. But um, I never had, I think the scariest, I don't even want to say scary, the thing that probably freaked me out the most in that house um, was the rustling, you know, of the candy in the dish and the, all the energy that I felt. Um, but I had a roommate um, at one point. He was living in the original dining room, and the spirits would play jokes on him. At one point, they would make just his room smell like sewer. Whoa. Not a good joke, but... Um, one time they made it smell like he left the iron on, so it felt, smelled like something burning. But I couldn't smell it, only he could. Um, the little, oh, there's a little girl. I forgot about the little girl. Scott has seen her from the library parking lot. Um, she's in a white nightgown, and she would wander around, and she yelled at me one time, and she's like, where's John? Where's John? And John's my son. And I'm like, he doesn't live here. And so next time he was over, I'm like, Somebody wants to meet you. And so I said, we went in and I said, John's here. And you could just feel all this energy. And then it was, it was almost like a no, not right. This isn't right. And she disappeared. And um, a month later, my roommate, she pinned him down to his bed. And she said, Tom, not John. I don't know who Tom is. But so that was, so stuff like that happened a lot. Um, my son's... My boys are very intuitive um, also, and when they would come to visit, they refused, after sleeping in the original side once, they slept in the kitchen <laughs> on the new side. <laughs> are you concerned yeah. at all that if the house gets moved, the spirits will be upset? Hmm. I'm sure they probably will, but if the house, I'm sure they'd rather have the house moved than destroyed, you know, and that way they... Hopefully they go with the house and always have a place to be. And they're welcome, yeah. Spirits really stay around either because of unfinished business they feel they have mm -hmm. to have or a role, or because they really want to um, watch out for someone else. And it wasn't until really recently that someone reminded me that, you know, in non, uh, non traditional like in a lot of um, other circles that I'm in, people I just simply ask the ancestors for help more mm -hmm. often and they're yep. always waiting until we ask and mm -hmm. think that when we're tackling big things in our world, we forget that we can do that consciously too. You know, yeah. They may be waiting, but you invited them, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was their space first, you know, because when I was, went in and was changing things up and adding color and taking things down and they, they would make themselves known and they would make themselves known that they weren't happy about what the change. They don't want to change. Spirits just, they're used to what they, they're used to. Um, and I just said, look, I said, 
It's been your house for 300 years. Now it's my turn. <laughs> so, you know, I said, I don't, you're more than welcome to live here with me. That's fine. I said, but it's my decor, not yours. And they were fine with that. I think it's interesting that the, and it, it must just be because of the energy rather than the facts of the encounter. Because when you describe the scariest thing being the candy in the dish, yeah. which I would think like, well, maybe it was a mouse, and, but not the guy lying in bed next to you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why didn't you just like scream? Like, and could you get, say a little more about that? Like, what did he... I mean, did you see him as if he was a solid being? Pretty much. Okay, so pretty much. I, I mean, did yeah. it occur to you that he was somebody that broke in and was lying in your bed, or did you? I mean, how did you? No, because he on? was fuzzy around the edges. Okay. You know, but he was under the covers, and he had a navy blue sweatshirt, uh, like a hoodie, on, and he so had modern a, clothes. Modern clothes. Yep. Yeah, and um, and yeah, I could I could only see his eyes. Like his, his, I, I could see his face, but he was kind of just fuzzed out mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. But there was no, there wasn't even like a, like a sudden. No, like I'm like, very, like, I'm very low key about stuff like this. So I'm like, oh hey, who are you? <laughs> what brings you by? <laughs> I'm trying to go to sleep. What can I do for you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so and then the the, and I know it was a female energy in the in the pure white. It was a bright bright white would just come and trying to pull him and he's just like, help me, help me. And I don't know what he wanted help with. And like I said, my daughter saw him a couple hours before walking down Briles Landing Road. So, which was very interesting. <laughs> also too, it's important to be aware of that, you know, they're, they're, they're aware when things happen, you know, and so they're probably aware of the process. Mm -hmm. of that, of, you know. Yeah. I think they still wonder where your wind goes. Probably. That's my sense. Yeah. They're not, they're like, where'd you go? You're right, and I pop in every now and then and, and they're like, oh, hey. Did you tell them where you went? I did, okay. I did. Um, but yeah, so my daughter would come over and she's very sensitive, like I am, even more so than I am. And uh, we'd be sitting in the new section because it was a great room, kitchen, living room. And we'd be sitting on the couches and I could just feel somebody behind me. And I'm like, there's somebody over there. And she goes, yeah, tall, dark shadow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, and some, every now and then he'd come up and he'd be like right between us and you could just see like a darkness. You couldn't really see a shadow or an outline, but you just a, just a darkness. That area just got darker than the rest of the room. Um, one time I came home, and r my daughter was coming over for dinner in a little bit, and I got home from work, and the whole house, basement to the second floor, smelled like boiled hot dogs. I don't eat hot dogs. I haven't had hot dogs since I was 28. I <laughs> and she walked in 10 minutes later. She's like, oh, great, we're having hot dogs. I'm like... I haven't even started dinner yet. <laughs> and then she realized that I don't eat hot dogs. So, so that was quite interesting. But I always loved the smell of the flowers or the smell of the, the brownies or the cookies. I'm like, well, now I'm hungry. But you know, I'm like, can you make them for real? I, I always asked her. <laughs> but yeah, so yes. Is there a reason you think the spirits picked that house just because it's so old or because the characters that live there? Or? Um, I know a couple of them lived there. So uh, the grandmother on the second floor, she used to be a caretaker for somebody who lived in the house. Um, the woman, the very strong woman on the first floor, she used to live in the house. The caretaker, I believe, used to take, help take care of the house and the grounds, probably more the grounds than the house. Um, During what okay. era do you know? I, I couldn't even tell you. No. Sometime in that 300 years. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm going to say probably 1700s. Most likely, 1800s, but yeah. Some of it's like in the, I think the 60s. Yeah, so, but yeah, like the grandmother on the second floor, she was later, she was in the 1900s, you know. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was always something. You know, you never knew what to expect. Um, curtains would move, things would change, and it was, yeah, it was great. But every time I had a party, the spirits would just vanish. No one would be there. I'm like, come on, they're here for you. And they just, nope, they just vanished. They wanted nothing to do with big groups of people. You get one to, one to five people, yeah. then it's their party. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, but yes. So they wouldn't, uh, did you invite them to come to your new house? I invited them, they could visit, but not stay. <laughs> Yeah. And do they? No. Yeah. No. 
It's been very quiet at my house. It took some getting used to, yeah. you know, because I was used to um, living in there and with whatever activity was going on, you know. But I do have to say about the, the old house, and it has nothing to do with the spirits, but it's a great house to be in when there's a storm coming because you can just, it's like, you're, it's like you're in the storm. You know, the wind is coming through and, you know, the thunder and the lightning just overhead and it's all shaking. It's just right above you. It's, what an experience. I remember one time that we were having a tornado. There was tornado warnings um, but the year before, three years ago. And it was coming from the canal and it was just coming up and you could just hear it rolling and you could see the clouds coming right up and over and it was the whole house just shook. I was like, whoo, okay. But it was just that stuff was exciting too. The weather. <laughs> yeah. Is it tough to keep warm? Very. <laughs> Very, yes. I lived in cold house for many years. <laughs> But that's okay, because the character of the house, you know, it had the wide pine floors, and it had the horsehair plaster, and the lathe, and the, the fireplaces, even though they weren't working, they were just great to have around, put candles in them, and make them look pretty. But it was just, it was just a lot of fun. I absolutely love that house, and I, I miss it dearly. I really do. And I always said, if I could just take the original section of the house, which I know you guys are trying to save, and I hope you do, um, if I could take that and move it somewhere, and live in just that section, I, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would, because it was, it was so great. So great. Well, I, I look at it this way. They saved me from what I was going through, and I feel like I saved them as well. Yeah. So we, we relied on each other for many years. <laughs> you know? So Anne, what, what do you recommend that we could do as an organization to get the spirits on board to you know, help with the success of moving the Keen House? Do you think we should address it so that they know, you know, I mean, would they, would they already kind of have the context where it's either going to get knocked down or moved or, you know, could, I, we, could we get them on board for the success of the move? Well, I think once everybody is out of the house, mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to go over and have a little chat with them and try to get them together and be like, look, they're going to move the house. It's just going down like half a mile down the road. Go, go with it. You know, be happy. Go with it. They want you to go with it. They want you to be happy and, and stay there. And you know, yeah. So I'd be more than happy to join you on that as soon as everybody's out. Yep. Awesome. Definitely. Now, the tenants that is there now, do they see any of these spirits? Or they cleansed the whole first floor of the house. They saged it, so the spirits aren't there. So they're really only on the second floor or they're down in the basement in the new section with the guy who used to be my room. He was living there when I was there. So they're either down there or upstairs. Sage, sage in a, in a ritual. Yep. Yep, I've, I've, cl I've cleansed people's homes before they didn't want them there. And so does, is that likely that those spirits are now gone or they're just kind of tucked away? They're tucked away, okay. yeah. They're still there, because I felt them when I went upstairs. <laughs> And they're probably still down the root cellar too. Probably a couple went down there, and yeah, yep. So, but thank you for having me. This was this is a lot of fun. I I could talk about the house all day long, the spirits, the character of the house, you know, the things they found when they were redoing the siding and the roofing, you know. It's just, it's really, you know, the siding <laughs> was the old wood, and you could just when they had it stripped down, you could see right through into the house. <laughs> so they weren't like butt up like they are now, you know, it's just, cause there's no, there was really, there's like this much space between the outer wall and the inner wall and there's no insulation, there's nothing. So it was very interesting and seeing up in the attic and you know, they had the roof off, you can see right out and there's holes, you know, holes in the wood everywhere. And but it's like, this is, so historic when you get to that point it's you know over 300 years old and it's wow. it's really cool they had they had lined the house under the siding with canvas so there was like pieces of canvas that were still available with the old you know square top nails mm -hmm. and stuff like that and yeah. i still have that all gone at this point it's all gone at the, i have some at my house but yeah <laughs> and i i stole some wall i took some wallpaper um, from the second floor in the red room because that was the psychic center of the house mm -hmm. and I've, I've been meaning to frame it and hang it up in my own place and I haven't done that yet but um, I, who doesn't love a good ghost story? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever lived in a, another house when there's been 
every house I've been in has been spiritual activity. Wow. Uh, my ex-husband lived over in Buzzards Bay in a 1950s ranch, but because we had five kids and myself and we're all psychically connected, it was a portal for spirits. And so there was a lot of activity in that house. Um, I grew up with Ouija boards and seances and moving furniture and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. It's just a second nature to me, you know? So they must be comfortable around you. I think so. Yeah. I think so, because they know I'm accepting. You know, I, I travel the country and I stay, purposefully stay at haunted places <laughs> so I can connect with these spirits. And I always tell them they can use my energy to communicate, and a lot of times they do. And then I'm exhausted and I, I sleep like the dead <laughs> afterwards, especially at the Lizzie Borden house. You know, um, that's, yeah, so, but, and, but at this, at Nine Sandwich, I didn't sleep well most of the time. Huh. Most of the time, yeah, because I was around them all the time, and I think I was familiar with them, so I think that's why. Yeah, wonderful job. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs>